a beer. I gotta, I'm gonna have this. That's a Dr. Pepper. It's not cold yet. When we go outside, I'm gonna have a beer. The ones I like were warm. We're, we're going outside, we're, aren't we're we? We're over here trying to get fucked up before the deck. Wait, aren't we going outside? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll have a beer. Mine are warm. I don't drink warm beer. I don't even like beer as it is unless warm beer. I spent my segment will be pretty quick tonight. Oh, we're good. I don't yeah, know. I'm speeding lot. through my shit. Steelers suck. Browns are good. End of show. Let's go get drunk. All right. Suns are in the playoffs. These fuckers facing either the Warriors or the Cavs. No, Warriors or the Lakers. Yeah, that's we're, what I meant. We're fucked. I still think of LeBron as the Cavs. We could have went against anybody else, literally, and I would have felt great. When he faces the Warriors, he's a Cav. You guys ready? Let's start it. All right, let's go. Wait, no. Okay, go ahead. Wait. Right. No. Uh, uh, Wait. Good evening, everyone. The highlights of the new traffic accident. <laughs> This is sissy. Come on, bro. What's going on, y'all? Fucking You're tuning in to the tradition. highest rated, most listened to podcast to ever grace the airwaves. Tradition. 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 Maybe not. Tradition. Really Tradition. This is the Made Motivate podcast, and we'll be talking Frank social media tank. hot topics, Frank the pop culture tank. news, Good for you, machine. the greatest in movies and music, and now all things. Bash it on your head and crush it. Make sure you're following us on social media at Made to Motivate Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Aww. and Twitter. And you can watch the show on our YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. And with that being said, let's get this show started. What movie is that where he tries to crush it? It's just like, pink. He leaves like a big ring on his forehead. I don't know. Um, maybe it was a TV show or something, but they're all like cracking him. And he's just like, oh, that does sound familiar. I think it's a TV show, though. Christopher? Oh, God, IPAs are not chugging beers. That burn, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's not good. No. Um, What's up, y'all? Made to Motivate Podcast, Season 4, Episode 18. This is your host, Ryan Weiss. I am joined, as always, by Jesse Young from Sports Illustrated. What's going on? We can officially fuck this season. Damn, he took my joke! Fuck! Damn. That joke? Dude, I was seriously about to say that. Great minds. Damn! I missed the joke. What's it's up? Episode 18. Because you said 18, yeah. So we can fuck the episode now. <laughs> yeah, this season's legal. God, I'm slow. Ryan's <laughs> like, I'd have fucked it last episode. Uh, if you want to be technical, he could have fucked it last episode. 17 is Ohio. But anyway, with parental I consent. Think 16. No, so. 16, 16 is cons- parental consent. 17 is legal in Ohio. Even if you're like 30, look that up. I, I need to look that Strange up. Strange rule. Not that I know. Let's not, ad- let's, let's not advise <laughs> our listeners of that. <laughs> Christopher, the film free Kessinger. <laughs> Christopher, the film free Kessinger is not a legal matter. That's right. I'm single. <laughs> Anyhow, um, new, exciting, fun thing since the last show that we did. Fucking back to work, man. Sucks. Oh, yeah. You were on vacation. Yeah. It was a nice week off. Yeah. You did a lot. You I had, tried uh, so many damn good things. Yeah. You got to check Chris's Facebook if you're not personally friends with him on there. Friend request him. Your box is going to blow up. Friend me. I'm not fucking Steven Glansberg. Um, and <laughs> he did a cool eat around the world thing for vacation. So there's a lot of cool places. Were all those places new to you or just places that you really like? I've had them. Yeah. So that's the reason your dad asked me to try one, but I've never been there before. Mm. So I'm like, I can't throw that on my suggestions because I don't know if it's good or not. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What else did you do other than uh, eating around the world? Um, I just kind of, honestly, it was just a chill vacation. I was just yeah. kind of hanging at home. Uh, I started getting things ready for the garage, like swept out the floor a little bit and uh, looked at some rugs that I'm going to lay down in there when I put the pool table in. Nice. Nice. Yep. Jesse, did you do anything fun and exciting since last show? Had a dynasty startup draft. Oh yeah. That went very well. Put it through a couple of, uh, rate my team type of website things. And they all had me one, two or three in oh. both contention this year and dynasty value for the future so i am set now you get to make your own picks on that right or or the picks made for you so the way that it works in the dynasty startups is everybody gets an equal opportunity at a player so you nominated a player let's say you put saquon barkley up Mm -hmm. well we all have four hundred dollars that we can bid to fill our roster and everybody goes from there so i sat back for a while didn't overspend on anybody Ended up getting some quality running backs, Alvin Kamara and Nicholas Chubsky. Kamara won me the championship last year single-handedly. Yep, me too. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. (laughs) And then we also decided that we were going to move and then decided that we were going to wait. And now we have decided to build an addition on the house. So What the fuck? Yeah, we did all that in a week. You're going to do a refinance? Uh, Eventually. I don't know. I got to talk to you about some stuff later, but... uh, 
Yeah, nice. I think so. So no moving. The Just plan is now that we don't want to move because everything we found was like shitty or we liked it but they were like like one house we went to and it was the first one we really felt like we might buy the old ladies and house. they were like well we really want to have a, an idea of what we're going to do by five o'clock tomorrow and i'm like i'm not making a 30 year decision yeah. on in less than 24 hours like yeah. no so yeah i was just like because steph would not have that conversation for the longest time of staying yeah she was like, I don't want to be in Akron. I swear, like, I'm like, whatever, like, I'm not doing it. And, uh, and I was like, all right, so just hear me out. What if we could double the size of our house for cheaper than buying these new houses right. that we're going to inevitably spend 180 grand on? Yeah. Like, you got a big yard. You can expand sideways and backwards. Dude, I could pull sure. that bad boy out 20 feet to yeah. the side and it wouldn't make a dent. You yeah. might as well pull it out to where those bushes are because you don't ever hit those bushes. Right. <laughs> um, he obviously doesn't pull out either he's having a kid so <laughs> right but uh yeah so that's i don't know cool. what we're gonna do yet but that's the plan i want to i want to have a another room upstairs that'll be our master room and yeah. then put a little den like living area down below and then bring the kitchen out also i basically want to bring out 30 feet of our house out 20 feet yeah put so some 30 by 20 and dope. that'll put some concrete value on it for sure goddamn right yeah. That's cool. Hopefully. We'll see. Got to run the numbers. Run it up. What about um, you, Ryan? Have you done anything I did fun? some mini golfing. and That's it. Has that been since? I mini golfed. I went oh, to Sluggers and Putters on Sunday. Um, How'd it feel? This dude's going to be oh, like Brad that. by the end of the year. Like, oh, I'm a professional at every single course. And that's all it takes. Dude, Honestly, that's practice. the only reason Brad and Norm both got to where they are. You can quote I, me. I want that belt. I want to. I want that belt for. I just even just once. Even if it's the tournament, if it's a contender match, I win. I want that belt once. Only eleven guys have held that belt, so I'm gonna be number twelve. See, I'm planning on just like falling my way into it somehow. <laughs> Trip fall in. And, um. So I golfed, and then I broke the girl in. I got the girl. I grilled out. Hung out on the deck. God, that looked bomb. Yeah, it was nice. So now I'm ready. Those and burgers test you run. Amazing. Yeah. They were so good. You gotta make some so you got some burgers? They're frozen. Unfreeze them. <laughs> we'll we'll run the show. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> it's amazing how things melt when you take them out of the cold. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Mini golf hung out. Nice weather. I think the weather's here to stay finally. So we'll yeah. have some deck hangs and jinx. No, good I checked job, the weather. Fucker. It looks good, man. They're so. dude, for our game Sunday, like they're talking about it might get as high as 89. Mm -hmm. I'm like, y'all gonna be sweating out there, and I'm gonna be in the trees keeping score. Yep. Yeah, so I think we'll be in good shape. Anyhow, I know the gents are anxious to get through the show because they want to go hang outside on the deck. And get We're drinking wasted. on the deck for the first time in like how long has it been since we started oh the deck? God, this freaking guy. Is it over a year? No. And it's if you it's got to be close. It started in June. Yeah. It's almost a year. God damn, it's almost been a year and we haven't done anything on it. If you were part of our Patreon, you would have special access to our deck drinking. This is true. You might even get an invite. I don't even know. Deck party? Deck. We're going we're to have a deck party for sure. Uh, yeah, I got that, back, that backyard set up nice. We got to have some people over. Got cornhole boards. Like 80 pit. people. Let's just kick it. Like got that whole park. Everyone can just park at the park. park Walk on over. Park at the park. Is it really that close? Yeah. All right, where are we starting? I'll be the curtain jerker. You want to jerk it off tonight, Chris? Yeah, jerky jerk, turkey jerk. I don't know what what segment are you? Jeez. <laughs> forty five, forty. Run, William, run! My God! Okay, forty it's fifteen. Let's mix them together. Have sexual relations with that woman. LeBron James with the rejection. This is locker room talk. Freaking shit show. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Sorry for the. We're just a train wreck tonight. Yeah. Uh, well, we have had one beer. So. Hollywood Report, Christopher. What is going on? What is new? What's exciting? What sucks? I watched a cool show. You shot all over it. You gave it a two out of 10. Uh, I, I liked it. it. Cool. I thought it was good. What's going on? Ryan likes all the shitty movies and shows. It wasn't bad. Here comes that IPA. <laughs> Um, two months ago, we talked about the Rock Hall of Fame, the newest class, and the nominations. We made our predictions. Well, the official list is in on who made it, and I wanted to go Ooh. through some of them. Do we have our notes for who we picked? Damn it. I know who I picked by heart. 
um i can't remember you guys i think we were all pretty similar though yeah i know some of us like i had ll and you guys had jay-z yeah 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 well you guys would be right on that jay-z is one of the nominees you crazy for this one jay first first uh nomination and he gets in um you know i know jay-z's done a lot and but i that still does kind of surprise me because they don't view rap as as essential as they do like rock music or country or blues, you know, for the hall of fame. Yeah. Rap. It's usually two or three inductions. It takes you to get in. Yeah. He He's is got an empire, man. Cornerstone though, man. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he earned it. Um, aside from that, we got the go-go's are going to be in it. Um, we got Foo Fighters made it on their first. Nice. Figured they would get in. I had a bet with my friend over that, and he goes, they're not big enough to, to get in on the first try. I'm like, dude, over the last 20 years, there is not a bigger rock band than I was going to say, Foo who Fighters. the fuck doesn't know the Foo Fighters? Yeah, I'm like, they've... I'm not even like a music guy. They've sold out arenas. There, there's, yeah, it it's, goes yeah. without saying. Um, we also have got uh, Tina Turner getting in finally. Uh, Carol King and Todd Rundgren. I don't know who that is, but that is your class. Can we finally get rid of all the stupid red tire Devo hats that are all across our city that look like shit? Yeah. So, so that was my thing is obviously the local connection, everybody was voting for Devo, but I'm like, they haven't done enough. They're, they're more of a style band over substance. That's the thing that people remember them for. It's, it's how many people book. outside of Akron know or listen to Devo? Exactly. Everybody knows Whip It. That's it. Yeah. That's the only song that they have. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one that I'm kind of disappointed didn't make it was Iron Maiden, but I can understand. I mean, I think you can either have Foo Fighters or Iron Maiden. Yeah. I think the Academy went with Foo Fighters. I think next year Iron Maiden gets in. That's fair. Yeah. So pretty good class there. Um, moving on to movies. Um, it was a pretty good box office weekend. This was considered the first big welcome back weekend because you had some regals opening back up. The rest of them are opening this weekend. Um, so, you know, a lot of studios were throwing a lot of different films at, at the canvas to see what would stick. Yeah. And it looked like we, we got some good feedback here. Um, Spiral opened up with an $8.7 million debut, which is solid, not only for a Saw movie, but also for a movie in a pandemic. Yeah. Um, Me and Chris took Ashley skiing to see Saw Spiral. <laughs> that was good. I don't understand that reference. I guess not. <laughs> but uh, Spiral opened up at number one. Uh, eight- oh. Yeah. <laughs> 8.7 then there was a pretty big drop off though those who wish me dead was in second place at 2.8 million dollars um followed by godzilla vs kong still riding high 31 million overall for godzilla vs kong right now and mortal kombat 23.3 million right now so yeah we had i reviewed seven different films this year on my uh, or this week on my site it's and wild. Just something for everyone. I wanted to talk about two of them in specifically. Ryan brought up one already, Spiral. Um, we went and saw this. Jesse, you did not, correct? I haven't seen it yet. Okay. We'll talk what we can. Uh, yeah. Obviously, keep spoilers to a minimum. But, Ryan, what was your experience with this movie? I liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was for me, it was what I expected from a Saw movie. I mean, I wasn't expecting any more than what I got. Um, I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't overly thrilled. I think the one thing that kind of bothered me was the, it didn't seem like they had as much torture. Like they didn't have as many uh, mechanisms or, or things that they had in like the previous films where it was like one after another, after another. This had what, three? Maybe? This had five total. Did it have five? Yeah, it was just, well, they the were one, so spread out. And, and a lot of them, you didn't see the full execution. That's what I was saying. The them. one that we know of that kind of led us astray was a cop out. It, Right. Like you saw the aftermath, but they didn't show you any detail of it or whatever. So, right. um, which is what I think a lot of people go to the Saw movies for. Like, that's what they are. But overall, I thought it was good. I liked um, Chris Rock. I liked Chris Rock. Sam Jackson. Um, Sam Jackson was cool. Overall, it was a good. It was worth seeing. I, I'd say six and a half, seven. Yeah. It's probably fair. I think you you alluded to one thing that was interesting. Uh, my first interpretation of this movie was about a half hour in. I'm like, yeah, it really is more focused on the story mm-hmm. than it is the traps or the torture porn, yeah. if you will. Um, and, and for me, I think that takes us back to the first film. Yeah. You know, that was always about the the unraveling of who done it instead of the the blood and the gore yeah. that satisfied a legion of fans. Um so I, I did like that that direction. I, I felt okay with that. But at the same time, you also got to give the people what they want to. Mm-hmm. You also have to include those traps. And the traps are good in this film. But I think when compared to some of the other movies, they don't, they're not as creative. Yeah. They almost feel like they're, they're forcing death as to where Jigsaw always said, you know, the will to live mm-hmm. should be what's the most important with these. Yep. You know, so there was always a way out. Uh, there is a way out with these traps, but it just seems like it's a very 
diminished effort. Like yeah. your chance of getting out and permanent like decapitation or, you know, yeah. <laughs> losing an arm or something. These seem more so a forced death. Yeah. Or like they wanted you to torture yourself to with the attempt of living or escaping, but you were going to die regardless. Like yeah. I definitely got that from them. It didn't uh, seem like there was opportunity to live one way or another. Mm -hmm. So that no, was definitely different. no spoilers, but isn't this supposed to be a copycat though? So technically mm -hmm. yeah, they have the ability to switch it up for sure. But with that, there's one trap situation, which like they had a, I don't know. I, it almost kind of seemed like a pointless callback to the original very mm -hmm. first saw. Mm -hmm. And I, I like, think that why was, was the trailer. Why yeah. was it even it was. there? Like there was absolutely no point to it whatsoever. It was fan service. It was stupid. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tiptoe lightly around this area, obviously, because I don't want to spoil it for our friend. But like I told you, I leaned over to you about 15 minutes into the movie yeah. and I told you who the killer was. And I said, you know, this I, I feel that this person is definitely it. And I gave you two reasons why. Yep. And both of those came Bazinga. to fruition. Yeah, it was. So in Saw movies, the one thing I'll say is, you know, they're derivative and all that, but I've never been able to accurately predict yeah. uh, a killer in this movie. Yeah. Never once. Uh, this is the first time that I did without problem. Yeah. And it was 15 minutes in. Like I said, there's a couple of cliches that if you've watched enough horror movies, you in particular will definitely get this. You'll sniff this out from that's what life. every review says. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah. So the second you see this happen, you'll go, oh, well, that's the killer right there for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's the, the mystery could have been a lot stronger for me. That weighed down a lot of my interest. The fact that yeah. I'm sitting there for an hour waiting for the movie to catch up to what I know. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, as far as, you know, this whole franchise goes, I thought it was one of the better efforts, to be honest. I liked it. A lot of people are shitting on it right now. I've read a lot of reviews in terms of, you know, what they didn't like about the movie. And it just sounds like more of the same. Like, so mm -hmm. you didn't like it from this one. Then I imagine you didn't like it from any of the other eight movies then, too. Right. It's just what it is. Um, yeah, I gave it a six in my ratings, um, and it was a very soft six. Like, I was close to getting to a five. Dang. But I, I thought it was the third best of the franchise, in my opinion. And wow. at least a breath of fresh air, even momentarily, compared to the last three films. One and two are your favorites, right? One and two are definitely my favorites, yeah. yeah. Do you give a lot of horror-type movies high scores? Uh, it or is Follows that got a nine. Short? It Follows it, is so It good. Follows was a nine. Um, the Baba Duke was an eight, but now it's a nine. Still haven't seen that. Yeah, really fucking good. Yeah. Those are probably the two biggest ones of the I last. was just curious, like if that genre for you ever like really achieved because I mean a lot of horror movies are just cheesy. They you can. Know? So do you ever get success from them? They can, but I'm the hardest judge of yeah. you know character for that genre because I grew up on it. Yeah. So I'm harder on horror than I am anything else. Do you sure. need to have seen all of the other saws to enjoy this movie? No, no. Could just go in as a brand new fan. Yeah, um, that's, it, that's a great question, too. Uh, yeah, I think if you're watching this, even if you just saw the first Saw movie, you'd have no problem. They talk about the legacy of John, you know, John Kramer, Jigsaw mm -hmm. himself. But it's not really something that, like you said, it's a copycat killer. Yeah. So it's not that we're dealing with this person anymore. It's just what his lore Principle and his was. legacy had right. to do with this new generation yeah. of killers. They, they create their own storyline and it's just based off what the principles of what John was, like yeah. why he did what he did. But you don't need those. That's, to that's my whole thing, because it's like I really enjoy the first Saw. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a big fan of any of the other ones because of the fact that it is just torture porn. Mm -hmm. And there's not a huge there's story to it, but it's just like, well, we had to give them some kind of motive. So here. Right. And some kind of outline. It's just not good. Yeah. So. I am excited to see this because I was really hoping based on the trailer, I thought it looked more story oriented. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to be like a diehard Saw fan, even if this one blows me away or anything, but like, I hope they keep going that route because yeah. I'd much rather have an in-depth psychological thriller. Like I got seven vibes from that trailer. Yeah. And I don't, I doubt it was, I mean, you gave it a five, it's, so it's not seven. It's not but, seven, but you can definitely, that's a fair justification though, to compare it to, yeah. um, because you can tell this is one of those derivative films that takes a lot from seven. Yeah. Seven is like, it's not a horror movie, but that's some real horror. Mm -hmm. Like I love seven for that reason. Yeah. So we need to get some more horror like that. That's really, if you're going to go slasher, torture, whatever, like at least make it deep in some form or fashion. I agree. That's why I like Zodiac a lot too. Oh, Zodiac is so, so good. good. Yeah. So with this, do you, is there going to be another one? Uh, well, we know I, if there's going to be, another there's one? none that's signed as of right now, okay. right now, this is a one-off, but like, you know, if obviously they had a great opening weekend, if the fans are there, they will make more, you know, they didn't, it's they, just, they didn't, 
original was supposed to only be one it's movie. where do you go with it I, I mean you know who it is at this point yeah like where do you continue that story without just uh, without it turning what the other ones are where it's just forced storyline so they can continue the movie like where else do you take it at this point to me if you're going to make sequels i would almost wish they were kind of like anthology sequels where there it's a different story each time yeah so like like a universe john kramer has all these uh apostles or these you know people that look mm -hmm. up to him and, and all that like they're worshiping at him yeah so each movie is a different story a different character a different yeah. killer all that you know yeah you could, i think that'd be great that'd be the only way you could do that. it i think you yeah. could make a universe that was just the book of saw yeah like i think that's perfect yeah because i think for the, this story like the killer I'm, I'm cool with the killer the choice yeah. the person they chose I, thought it was good. I think their story makes sense especially as timely as it reflects on our own society that's all i'm going to say about mm -hmm. that but I, I i feel very one-off about this especially in the direction it leaves the other characters surrounding this person mm -hmm. i think the way that's that you I'm just like, said you that i think i know who it is mm -hmm. right off the bat that's my thing at this point it's like where do you take it mm-hmm like if you continue this it would have to be like what jesse said where or you said is it, it's standalones yeah because I, there's not a really great way to continue the story they could the way they left it but where do you go with it yeah okay i don't care about spoilers let's just i just want to know if i'm right so you just tell me spoiler alert for anybody listening well why don't you go you guess him is it samuel L. jackson no 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 but then no. that's where you that's what you're gonna think though. well him saying in today's society i was like old black cop sees the problems goes after people i don't know i thought i thought okay. it was samuel he leaned to me uh, at that point when i predicted who the killer was and he goes oh well yeah it's he's you said something like oh yeah, yeah well that's because you're the killer or something like that yeah, and i'm yeah. like nope yeah okay. i said i said he's the um he's the red herring he he's yeah. the one that they use you always see this in Try horror movies where they're them. like oh my god so much points and he's uh mr prescott sydney's yeah, father yeah, yeah. oh well, he was at the airport and he was at the hilton he hasn't been seen in days and yeah. all this well he's definitely the killer then yeah they set it up they set it up that the average person is going to think that's who it is for sure yeah it's so not, it's going to be okay. a, it's going to be an interesting twist for you i'm going to figure you it might out. pick it out i'm gonna get it it was I, good i thought the story was i thought they did a good job with creating a story that worked for the movie it's yeah. just where do they go with it now yeah it had good social commentary behind it which actually gave it purpose as opposed to the other saw movies like jesse said yeah so um for yeah sure. cool. now, i want to talk about one more um and then we'll move on um i saw army of the dead this weekend i was dreading this movie going into it i thought the trailers looked like garbage and i gotta tell you i had one hell of a fun time really behind this movie two and a half solid hours of action heart and non-stop drama this is the way zombie movies were supposed to be made wow look at zombie movies making a comeback yeah, train yeah. to busan and this and busan's great busan is great what did you rate garbage it? but uh what army army i gave a seven but i was wow. very close no i gave it an eight i'm sorry i did give it an eight um i was arguing with myself at the end of that review and i'd said man i want the eight but you know the seven it, it feels like a strong seven if anything yeah hmm. but instead i went with a soft eight what'd you give busan Busan, I gave it eight initially. Yeah, I would give wow. it a nine today. Okay. Yeah. But these are close though. Yeah, very close. I think Busan's better, but um, this one has a lot of fun. I think this one has more style. Is this in theaters? I have not seen this anywhere. It's in theaters for this past week. So it's in theaters through Thursday and then okay. it hits Netflix on Friday. They're taking it out of theaters once it hits Netflix. Is Spiral on HBO? I thought it was theater only. I think okay. it is theater only. For yeah. right now, at least. I'm just trying to figure out when I'm going to see it. Those, Steph's not going to go see that show. Those Who Wish Me Dead was HBO this week. Yeah. 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 And that was disappointing, unfortunately, with Taylor Sheridan. Um, but yeah, Army of the Dead's great. Dave Batista actually gives a legitimate performance for once. We're not just talking a physical one. We're talking an emotional one. Yeah. And I loved the, the kind of clout they gave to his character, the responsibility, the depth. Everything I thought made this not only a great protagonist, but the characters surrounding him are all fleshed out in a way you're like, this is one badass team. Even if you hate some of these characters, like you're interested in them, you're intrigued in them, you're invested in them. Even if you want to see them die, you're still yeah. invested in them. And that's better than falling flat on characterization. Yeah. Um, the makeup was solid. I thought there was one effect that I honestly would have done a little better, and that was the tiger. But uh, supposedly they used live action tigers and just gave it kind of a CG outline to it. Mm. So the movements are real. It's just the design is a little off and hokey interesting um but i would recommend it wholeheartedly yeah i gave it an eight out of ten and you know zach snyder he he's getting a lot of praise for justice league the snyder cut recently i don't even think it's his best film that came out this year this movie blows that away wow yeah damn so that's all i'll say and that's it for hollywood cool uh sports, 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 sports. anything else happened in hollywood 
anything else movie wise? I, I watch any movies. Movie awards were last night, but nobody cares about that. Was it MTV? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone cool on there? Margot Robbie? Uh, no. Scarlett Johansson got gacked for some reason. The the green gack stuff, like yeah. her, that's, that's MTV. Yeah. I thought oh, that was, was Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. It's supposed to be, but she got green gacked. I'll gack her. <laughs> uh, you want to do sports? Sure. Let's do sports. Sports. Swing and line to deep left field. It is gone. I get to do it twice today. 45, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, I had a beer, so he had a, a not even a full beer, a can. I drank it. Is that the same as a bottle? Is it the same amount? Yeah, it's of twelve ounces. Is it? Yeah. Oh, what? That's stupid. Yeah. Oh, bottles are you? bottles are skinny boys. Well, bottles and but cans. Clap I your hands. I drink these bad boys faster, man. Yeah. yeah, they go quicker than a bottle. I agree. Shotgun. No. You ever shotgun a beer? Never shotgun a beer. Chris? <sighs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You were a wrestler. You shotgun a beer. I used to do upside down keg stands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did I'm not shotgunning stands. this shit. Yeah, you are. No, they're you good. But the deck. No, it's like he said. It's not chugging beer. Oh, yeah, IPAs are brutal to chug. It's delicious, but not for it's chugging. Delicious. What's Ugh. going on in sports? Anything exciting? Um, I mean, I guess the most. Ex- <laughs> not really. Not really. LeBron's <laughs> back. Uh, yeah, Bron's back. Lakers. Warriors rivalry continues, baby. Are the wait? Are the Warriors even a thing still? Curry's been putting them on his yeah. fucking really. They're, back. I'll be honest, right now, if I was making a bet, I would bet on the Warriors. Really? Yeah. They're, Out of nowhere, they're solid, man. I, I don't I think, think they that they're a like championship team, but Bron better be on his A game. Really? Curry is playing MVP ball. I don't think that he is the MVP because you can't. I can't give the MVP to a guy who just drug a team to the oh, eighth no. fucking seed. No, but it's Jokic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh what? No, they're doing eight versus seven play in game to go against Chris's sons. Uh that game's Thursday, I uh, believe. Yeah, a Wednesday. I'm sorry. Wednesday. Because the Eastern's Tuesday and the West is Wednesday. Okay. So um I don't like playing games. So wait, are we in the playoffs? This play in game gets you to the playoffs. Yeah. The way what the game what? They, they, get, it's a one game win all to go on to the Suns. And have Jesse explain this to you. Yeah, how hold runs. on. I'm super confused. This isn't like just the normal season where you just got to get to the playoffs by record or whatever. So what? the NBA did this new thing this year Let's where you have this. a play in game to get into the playoffs between the seventh and eighth seeds and ninth and 10th and ninth and 10th. So now the seven and eight seeds, which is the Lakers and Warriors and Warriors, Warriors are eighth. Yeah. Lakers are seventh. They will play one game to go on to the actual playoffs where they will face the Suns in like a regular seven game series, what? Yeah. which is stupid. Why did they add this? I don't fucking know. Well, for ratings, so probably. If they didn't have it, then neither the Lakers or the Golden State would be in. There. They would both be they in. They would because both they'd be, be seven in because and nine eight. and ten would not be. And we would get the Lakers anyway. Oh, so they're giving seventh and eighth an opportunity at the seven spot they're giving nine, nine and ten, and ten a spot to get that spot. eight spot it's the same thing they did with the nfl they added one more team it's, it's like, so stupid uh, though just fucking because sad. basketball you need seven games yeah. anything can happen in one basketball game that completely affects it all and it's just trash like basketball is one of the few sports Dang. where the best team consistently wins and now i gotta worry about steph fucking curry don't you think it's good though for the vulnerability of each team no it's good <laughs> it's good for fucking ratings because now i have to watch but yeah. bro, i haven't watched a single game all year golden state knocks out braun in the in that one game i'm gonna be salty I'm gonna be salty. The, the thing is if the lakers lose though they're still in it because they would go on and play the winner of the 9 10 game for the eighth seed what Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so that, that's why I said this is the confusing and convoluted part of this whole bracket. So, like, Fuck. whoever so loses it's not that, just the winner of 7-8 takes the 7th spot, the winner of 9-10 and 10 takes the 8th spot? The winner of 9-10 to 10 is now in contention for the 8th spot. So whoever wins that faces the loser. So they got to win twice. Whereas yeah. 7 and 8 only has to win one. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. So if they win, they face the Suns, but if they lose, they face whoever's the winner out of 9 and the 10? The winner of 9 and 10, yeah, for the 8th seed. I'm throwing that game. Mm-hmm. I'm not facing oh, the Suns. Whoa, wait. But then oh. you're facing the Jazz. Wait. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you see what I mean? So because it, it's eight one, it's two seven. Okay, that that's what I thought it would so, be. But I thought you were saying that 
if the Lakers lost, they would face whoever was nine ten. No, we need a visual. Was, this that's, is so. That's fucking, what I'm like. I'm like, this whoa, is so stupid. I'm confused. Yeah. So, so okay. seven and so Lakers and Lakers and Golden State play seven and eight. Seven eight. Lakers win. They yeah. move on. They automatically move on. They're the seven seed. Okay. So now you've got nine Phoenix. and ten. So the Warriors lost. They will play the winner of that nine ten game. Let's say Memphis wins. Okay. Now it's Memphis and the Warriors for that eight seed. So they play two playing games. Yes. Double elimination. Yes. I think that's stupid as fuck. And well, so the loser. So this is just an extra game because the Warriors are going to beat Memphis. The loser yeah. of seven, eight, whoever, whoever loses that is going to yes! stop. The loser of seven, eight has to play two games and the winner of nine and 10 has to play two games. But the winner of seven, eight only has to play one game. Yeah. I would honestly rather play the jazz. You've got you. I don't know. Mitchell's back now. I don't know. They just turned something. They made it way over complicated. It doesn't even be this complicated. You've, you've got. You, OK, so as Jesse said, the regular season, Lakers finished seventh. The Warriors finished eighth. Just that's it. it. The play, yeah, that is what it. it is. Suns get the Lakers. The Warriors get the Jazz. That's how it is. Yes. They're just creating. The Those are two good games. Yeah. They're, Lakers, Suns, Jazz, series. Fucking Warriors. That's solid. Yeah. It's fucking dumb. The That's NBA stupid. is stupid. The NBA was like, oh, well, we made the all-star game super complicated with this scoring thing, and people loved it. Yeah. Let's throw in a double elimination play in game. They're basically given the opportunity for, like, a, a lower, a higher seed to just have an upset. Mm -hmm. The fucking That's playoffs it. are watered down as it is. Yeah. We shouldn't yeah. even be having eight fucking seeds in there. When's the last time an eight seed beat a one? And the, uh, the Nuggets beat the Sonics in nine. Or no, no, I'm sorry. The Warriors beat the Mavericks in 2007. Yeah. So we got to go back fucking over a decade yeah. for that shit to happen. Yep. It's fucking stupid. It's dumb. Uh, you should really have dumb. six teams on either side that go into the playoffs mm -hmm. to begin with. And now we're starting to put in the nine and 10 seeds. There's only fucking 30 teams in the goddamn league. That's too many. So you're going to have one good game with the Warriors and Lakers, obviously. Right. That's the game people tune into. But then you're going to have a really shitty Constellation game when whoever loses that game has to, to play face the Memphis State. or San Antonio. Yeah. If it's San Antonio, that's going to be a 40 point. Dude, Phoenix just beat them by 41. Yeah. Memphis and San Antonio are sitting there like, fuck, do we have to? Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, let them out. Their season's done. Get them out. Yes. You're not going to win. You're not winning a fucking championship. Yeah. You're ruining your draft lottery ticket position yeah. like you know what the suns were last year ninth yeah nobody gave a fuck oh no. and they wouldn't have done shit if they got there actually they were hot last they year they might have done something but <laughs> regardless history shows they probably wouldn't have done shit mm -hmm. we would have faced the lakers that would have been tough i don't know i, I think That's it's dumb stu it's stupid the nba is just like scrambling for ratings i think at this point so we'll see i'll watch it i mean i'll watch the lakers it's gonna be game. fun yeah. But after that, I'm not gonna one be. Game. I'm not gonna be honed in. I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just bet on Brown getting his fifth, and if he doesn't, he'll get it next year. You want to make predictions? Oh God, I don't even know who's in the playoffs. I haven't even watched. I have literally not watched a single game this year except for the one that we went to. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Uh, who's gonna win? Oh well. Um, if you had to bet, yeah. is, is AD even back? I don't even know. Uh, yes, he is. Well, but he's we'll, not. Him and Braun aren't 100, percent but they're back. I think they win then. Um, an 80% Braun and AD is better than 100% most people. That's what's interesting about the the Warriors game. Now, in my opinion, the Warriors are playing with better chemistry right now. They're playing as a better team, but but the Lakers have the better players. So it's it's interesting. It's that dynamic. Um, so you're saying Warriors are Golden State for that, for the West? Well, those are the same team, so it can't be. <laughs> Warriors and Lakers. I, I think, honestly, the way the bracket's going to shape up, because in my opinion, you're going to have Golden State versus Utah, and you're going to have Lakers versus Phoenix. Lakers are going to beat Phoenix, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but I'm a realist. Um, so I think, you know, and then you're going to have Lakers and probably Denver in the second round. Denver's pretty solid, but I think six-game series Lakers would probably take it. Um, Jazz and I think the Warriors will write. I actually I could see these teams facing again in the Western Finals, the Warriors and Lakers. Yeah, for sure. I'm calling the upset. Oh. I'm calling the Golden upset. State? Really? No, uh, no, not not that upset. I'm calling those two teams, eight and seven, oh, yeah. going all the way to the, the oh, Western agree. Finals. But do you think that Curry agree. can keep up 45 points a game all the way through the playoffs right now? Yes, because the Jazz have about as good a defense as Phoenix does. Yeah. I'm calling Lakers Golden State as well mm -hmm. who are you saying goes out though the only like uh, with the western finals yeah that's tough i braun is not losing to steph curry again I'm now that durant know. is gone yeah i'm, I'm saying your little bitch ass face into the ground i'm saying lakers to the finals for sure i'm almost with it yeah i like with jesse and with your prediction i'm like it's hard to pick against the lakers even with the season they've had they've been plagued by injuries but i think it's kind of like that boston celtics year where it's like they lost 
I think 32 games, but they yeah. still went to the NBA finals. The, the playoffs take forever. By the yeah. time they get to the Warriors, if they do, AD and Braun are 100% at yeah. that point, and, and there's not a single person on the Warriors that can guard AD. I, Wiseman ain't going to do shit even if he comes back. So I think if the Suns don't take out the Lakers, it's going to be hard for anybody else to. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, what about the East? The East, I, I think Philly has, has, like a lot of people are talking about Brooklyn, but I think Philly is tough. Pound for pound, they're the best team in the East. That's what I've heard a lot of too. I haven't watched much of it, so I can't say for personal experience, but I mean, everything I see about the Nets this season has been, are they ever going to gel? Are they ever going to come together? This and that. And then they had that hot spurt and now I don't hear anything. So I don't know if they've been consistently going, but I'm here in Philly all over the place lately. I'm going Philly, Brooklyn for the East, and I'm going to go Warriors and Lakers for the West. That's fair. Um, And I think the Lakers are going to come out of the West and I think the Sixers are going to come out of the, the East. And then I think the Lakers are going to beat the Sixers. That's the last time the 76ers did anything. Yeah. That, well, that's the Never. thing. Like, they're, yeah, they're, what was their slogan for years? Um, trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Trust the process. And that took like 12 years. And now we're finally seeing it. Right. I mean, the Browns is always next year. And <laughs> it's so it's not any different. Sniff the Brown. Beat you, fuckers. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good prediction, though. Yeah. I'm, LeBron's time's right now. He's got to get them rings now while he can. So, yeah. and they, he plays different on that team. I think Phoenix I think is going to give them all they can handle, but yeah. like, I think the Lakers will win in seven. Okay. Now on to a sport that everybody loves. Foosball. <laughs> Got three things for football. Um, first thing, Juwan James. Juwan, yeah, man, was this? So, so Juwan James is this guy who plays for the Broncos. I believe he is a tackle or guard somewhere on the offensive line. Um, he was guaranteed $10 million this season. Okay. Mm-hmm. On his contract, fully guaranteed $10 million. During the offseason, he was working out at an off-site facility, tore his ACL. Now, based on his contract, Yikes. you are not allowed to work out outside of the facility, and they voided his $10 million and cut and released him. Damn. So now there is a huge uproar in the NFL because it was guaranteed. There's, there's two problems. Well, one, it, it was guaranteed if you followed the rules of the contract you can't work out at all you are not supposed can't to work out at home or anything no. if you get hurt offside the facility they are not liable for you that's because they have their own trainers and they want you to rehab at their level now if a guy like miles garrett say. baker mayfield uh naji harris you know a, a prime person on a franchise dak prescott ezekiel elliott gets hurt offsite they're going to give them the money and they're going to say okay come back next year but this guy is not a superstar on the line it's true so they said we're going to save 10 million bucks this guy can't play for us. Put him out on the street. Uh, he is going to be filing a grievance um, because the NFL requires you to come in in shape because when you go to training camp, it's not like how it used to be. Training camps used to be like two months before the season. Yeah. Now your training camps last, I think it's like 17 days or something before the season starts and you go into preseason. Like there's no time at all. You have to come in in shape because of the two game. Yeah, now you, it's a two game preseason. Right. And yeah. so it, it, it's just been shortened and shortened over the years anyways, though. Like if you don't come in shape, you're not going to be in shape in time to play and yeah. you're going to lose time. So these players are all getting in shape off off like Baker's down there right. throwing to all the receivers in Florida right now. You're going to not work out. For Miles is down there yeah. working out on his island vacation. You see videos of him. Um, and they're saying, you know, a lot of people are calling for the players unions head, though. Because they specifically said, do not go to the facilities because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So this guy is taking the advice of the players union that is supposed to be defending him, not going to the facility, has an unfortunate accident during his workout, gets cut, loses $10 million. Bro. Technically, the team Salty. did nothing wrong. Mm. So I want to know what you guys think about this. Because of the ex- expectations in the NFL, if he shows up out of shape and he's a fat fuck, he's not going to make the team right? and he's not going to have a job. Yeah. Well, so obviously you want to stay in shape, but he's going to, here's the thing. He's guaranteed that 10 million. So if he showed up a fat piece of shit, you still made the 10 million. That yeah. is true. Yeah. I mean, a guarantee is a guarantee, but it's not guaranteeing you if the you next contract, contract where you make the big money. Yeah. yeah. And well, that's what these guys really, really want. Of course. Oh yeah. He's going to, he's an idiot. He's going to be punished for it for sure. I don't think he's, I don't think he's in the wrong. I mean, he's in the wrong per contract for showing up. But what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? I mean, these people don't live by the stadium that they play at when in the no, off season. They hardly go anybody else, they does. Go elsewhere. Yeah, so you're not gonna work out for four months. Well, it's that's, one, that's it's one what the NFL would want yeah, you to do. Yeah, that's technically. I think that's a shitty ass. That's like a. 
loophole for them to fucking out people 100 percent. that's all that that is when you're on a team your body isn't yours anymore it's theirs it's just like the army it's like your body's not your own but it's that's also damned if you do damned if you don't yeah. if they showed up out of shape mm -hmm. they're gonna get shit for it but then in order to yeah. show up in shape you have to work out and break the rules of your contract mm -hmm. so what do you do and this and it's this a is a fringe player who isn't necessarily i mean this isn't like wyatt teller or joel batonio who's a pro bowl right. lineman that they're definitely not going to let go. Right. If he shows up out of shape, they're going to say, well, fuck, this is a shitty investment. We're going to cut him next year when he's only guaranteed $2 million and he's going to be on the street. Now, he's lost a lot more money because of this, but he's not expecting to blow an ACL during a routine workout either. Is he a tenured player? Like, he's at, he's played for a while. I don't has know. money. He's young. Like, if I know I'm he's this, younger. If I'm this dude, I'm getting a lawyer, and I'm finding someone else bigger than me who freaking got injured in the off season and they didn't cut him. And I'm going to say, you know, fuck you. If I was to your point, a miles Garrett or a Baker Mayfield, you'd say, Hey, you know what? Chalk it up. You'll be all right. We're going to have you around. Juwan James is 28 years old. So he's on his second contract. But because of this dude, they're just going to say, you know what? It's an easy out for us. And we're going to cut you. That's but even that though. You can't fire. Like just because I prefer to keep the elite talent of miles Garrett and hope that his ACL turns out doesn't mean that I have to do the same for you. Well, but you're making an exception to the, the contract. It's just the, uh, they are allowed to get rid of him. It's not necessarily that they have to. Uh, and two years ago, after the Cowboys, um, gave Ezekiel that massive extension. Um, he showed up that following season out of shape. They yeah. said he was 20 pounds overweight. Well, and all that. I remember that. He you was did, fat as hell. You didn't hear shit about that. Though. Like outside the media, obviously, but you didn't hear Dallas saying like, yeah, we're fucking pissed off about this and all that. No, it was yeah. just, he's our superstar. We're going to shut up. We're going to take it. Yep. Morally, I think that they're in the wrong. Yeah. But are they in the wrong? No. You think they're, they're I think morally they're doing the wrong thing. The dude was trying to, he was trying to stay in shape so that when he came back, they were getting their money's worth for the money that they're paying him. Mm -hmm. He was going to be an active player and be in shape and ready to go. So morally, I think they're doing the wrong thing by cutting him. But did they do anything wrong per contract? No. I also so, wonder how that sucks. I also wonder if like last season plays into this decision. So like obviously with COVID and everything, a lot of teams lost their revenue. Um, so like, you know, we're seeing more players now, more big players getting cut than ever before. So I wonder if this plays into that decision too. I, I do believe that he opted out last season, which okay. is another thing as well. So uh, I saw a statistic and I don't remember the specific numbers, but I believe there were around 67, I think was the number I saw players who opted out last year. Yeah. And of that, only 29 are uh, still on a roster. Wow. Not good, man. Yeah. So, so the NFL is all about what have you done now. And, uh, fuck you, basically. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with how they handled it because I think that they should take care of them. But this is the thing that makes the NFL great is that it is not a player league. If you get to become a player league, you end up like the NBA where these guys are doing whatever the hell they want. It's yeah. all one-sided. The NFL is very much a team-oriented league where no matter what, the turnover is constant. The owners are making money, but fans are getting to see good competitive football all the way around every single year where a team like Jacksonville that is trash can get a guy like Trevor Lawrence who, barring a bust, if he turns out to what he, be what we think he's going to be, could be a solid team for the next 10 years. Yeah. And that is the best thing about it is that these guys can just fucking slit throats at any time. Literally. And it, it is, is a hide your wife, hide your kids league. It's we don't fantastic, give a fuck. Though. You still can come and play. It's great though, man. I mean, like as a Browns fan who watched shitty football for so long, that was the anomaly to the rule. Most teams have a turnover where you can get, to a Super Bowl and then suck five years later and be a first round pick team parody. and then back to the Super Bowl again. It's parody. Yeah. That's what's great about the NFL as opposed to the NBA and the NBA like this year, you have probably four teams who could honestly realistically win it all. Yeah. Um, you know, in the NFL every year, we're sitting here making predictions and it's always something different every year. Yep. I mean, the Browns made it to the playoffs Yeah, and hell didn't even freeze over. That's true. That's right. It's yep. crazy. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess they're in the right. I mean, it sucks for him. So he's out. Like um, no contract, no he's contract, free agent. no nothing. Next Hope. year, when he's healthy, he might have an opportunity to sign yeah, back into the sucks. league. But by then, he'll be 29. So I'm guessing a 29 year old coming off of an ACL injury who wasn't that good to begin with is probably done. His I, career is probably over. I like your original point, though. I think honestly, if he were like a Pro Bowler or even an elite player, I honestly think they would probably 
take more time with 100 percent. you know they, the the punishment wouldn't be as severe they'd probably say we're going to work your ass to death in training yep. but we're going to hold on to you yep mcdonald's is hiring 18 dollars an hour and a sign-on bonus so i saw 13 dollars <laughs> an hour signed down at uh wendy's on the way here yeah so. i saw that too yeah solid um in more positive news this guy named austin pa pa i don't know something like that p-e-a-y austin Poy. um so this guy That's was how the college is called Austin PA. He received a text message that he believed was from the Atlanta Falcons asking for him to try out. He's a, you know, former college athlete, undrafted free agent, um, wanted to play, showed up and found out that it was a hoax. Jeez. Um, oh, shit. Jeez. Made a bunch of news, <laughs> but positively he has received an invite to an NFL workout. Oh, cool. Um, I don't, it's not with a specific team, I don't think. I think it's going like a group of undrafted free agents where people can come and scout them. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was funny. I think that was a friend of his that did it, <laughs> hoping that maybe it would turn out this way and he'd get an opportunity and to fucking get an actual tryout. So, so let's pull that off. Let's go up to and say, hey, I got a text to try out for the Cavs. I'm here. Years ago, this is the shittiest thing anybody's ever done to me. I got a... Uh, oh, Jesus. I got a call. Because I, I, I did my student teaching at Woodridge High School, and I loved it there. All the teachers were dope. They're, like, super fucking, like, um, you know, school spirit. Like, they did a rally, and, like, the fucking bowling team got, like, a standing ovation from everybody. Like, it was the closest thing to, like, a movie high school that I've ever seen. It, it, it's a nice campus, too. It's, it's dope. dope. Yeah. Um, so I loved it there, obviously. I still keep in touch with, like, some of my former students and everything. And uh, it all just went, like, super good. I get a call from this random number one day and I applied for like all these jobs. This is before I got a teaching job and this dude, like, I don't know their superintendent or anything. So I get this call and it's this fucking Indian dude. And he's just like, hello, this is so-and-so calling from Woodridge high school. And so that's what he sounded like. Um, so I'm just like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm ready, like, you know, whatever. He's like, we want to do offer you the a thoughts job. The comments of Jesse Unk do not reflect what the like. a podcast in any way. You don't hit it for maybe, that. You don't maybe ever Maybe he it. was Irish. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck so, you. <laughs> so this dude's just like, yes, we want to offer you the job at the Woodland High School. And I'm just like, fuck yeah. Like, I'm down, you know. So he's like, we will call you back in a few days to set up a meeting. And I never get a call. So I'm like, fuck, maybe they found somebody to fill the position or whatever. And like five years later, one of my buddies is like, bro, I never had the heart to tell you because you were so excited, but that was me. And I was wow. like, you fucking dick, like you motherfucker. And then I ended up in a better place. So it's, it worked out. But no wonder he sounded like a fake Indian person. Bro, that's what he sounded like. He was like fucking, uh, what's his name from the Simpsons? Jeez. Who was well, a white guy? No, it was the black guy. What's the dude's name? For, is, isn't it like Habib? Apu. Yeah, Apu. but it's played by like a white guy. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. It's Hank Azaria. Yeah, whatever. That's why he sounded that way when he called you. But yeah, I don't know. Happy story. The guy Jeez. got tricked and then, you know, he was good to go. So is he going to get, <laughs> a, he gonna get a, a scholarship or something? No, he's not even going to get signed because he probably sucked. That's why it's a news story. Damn. Everybody's going to be happy and he'll make a practice squad and then get cut in training camp because he's a bum. That's why he didn't get drafted, you fucking loser. Our audience is going to wonder why our episode this week goes from 3350 to like 3622. <laughs> Jeez. Last but not least, a little <laughs> bit of Steeler hate. Yeah. Najee Harris came out today and he said, and I quote, we have hella free time compared to Alabama in reference to the Steelers and the NFL and their training regiment. So being that you guys were 30 fucking second in rushing yards per game last year, you'd think you'd be out there training a little bit more. But instead, big boy Najee Harris, who's gonna turn into a fat fuck who's not working out at all that big body frame can't be staying in shape if you're not training is just gonna be another docket on your way to six wins next season he's not allowed to work out because he can't work out on, without fucking we got yeah, hella facility. free time hella free time Jeez. baker's down there throwing the ball ain't no free time in cleveland baby but yeah i don't, I don't know. know what the hell they're doing man they don't, they don't know what they're fucking doing i don't know if that's like him praising Alabama for working hard or being like, I don't know, Phil's losing kind of, fucks. I was say, it's kind of a jab, but I don't know. Sucks for you guys. I mean, it's not going to be a great season. It is what it is. Yeah. That's all I got for sports. Sports, sports, sports. Fuck the Steelers. Wow. This freaking guy. You don't want to make any Stanley Cup picks? 
Stanley Cup? Who's in? It I'm... is July 20th, 1969. And man is about to land on the moon. Freedom itself was attacked Let's go this Bruins! by a faceless coward, and freedom will be defended. Are the Bruins in it? I did not. And they are? They're going to fucking win. Relations for that one. That's the way the news goes. Jeez. It's going to be the Penguins and probably the Detroit it, Red Wings again. No, like the Red Wings year. haven't been good in forever. Uh-huh. The fucking Bruins, they're going to win. Title Town. Penguins are in it, though. Yeah, Penguins. Bruins and Penguins? Penguins are they're dope. In, they're in the same conference, so they can't meet in the finals, but it'll be the uh, Penguins. Let's get social. 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 Um, let's wrap this shit up and drink some beer. What do we want to start with? Uh, let's see. They're all the same thing. They're all based around DeWine for the most part. Cool. Um, Jesus. Mass mandates lift June 2nd. Yeah. Um, thoughts, comments, concerns, excited, not excited, don't give a shit. <sighs> to me, and I, I know I'm the unpopular opinion here, I don't think it's the right time, just because so many people, you know, like refuse to still get vaccinated and all that and it contradicts a lot of dewine's initial uh statements about the i know science is a thing where you're learning every single day but it contradicts his initial movements about you know who can get it how they can get it transmission all that now all of a sudden you're fine as long as you have the vaccine and yeah if that's the case then why wouldn't we not be able to just wear a mask anywhere right you know i didn't care to look into it too much because it was all people that hate to whine and conspiracy stuff, but yeah. apparently it was something along the lines of um, the reason it's happening. The date it's happening is because there was a law that was passing that, that DeWine tried to veto mm-hmm. it. I think DeWine initially tried to veto this happening and they basically vetoed DeWine and said, no, we're pushing it through. So yeah. he came out ahead and tried to make it like, oh, they basically yeah, put gonna... a law into place that allows you to overrule anything that, yeah. He can do basically yeah. any type of like so it, uh, mandates. So to your point, I don't think it was him being all like, Ooh, yeah, let's do this. He pretty much got his hand forced and to be ahead of it came out as if it was his own, like, Hey, we're going to do this kind of thing, which is why I think he probably Im- implemented the vaccine lottery mm-hmm. because he's kind of having his hand forced at masks, masks being lifted. Yeah. And he doesn't believe that we're ready. So he's like, fuck, I need to get people to get their vaccine. So what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, Which is bribery. Right. <laughs> it, well, and the thing Which is, is like, illegal. Yeah. They are um, lifting the mandate, but it's still business's discretion. Yeah. You know, public places, you don't have to wear it anymore. But um, to which I looked up some CVS, Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, Target, Trader Joe's, Starbucks, Walmart, Sam's Club. They all are all allowing you with full vaccination to not have to wear your mask. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I just don't know how that works. Do you are you gonna have to show your thing? Are they gonna have a door greeter that you show your card to when you go in? Like, are they really gonna ask every person that walks through the door? Do you have? Are you vaccinated? Do you have your papers? Where's this at? Um, CVS, Walmart, Costco, Target, Trader Joe's, Starbucks, Walmart, Sam's Club. Those all are not allowing you. Are those are all gonna allow you to visit their stores without a mask? And the thing is, if you're fully vaccinated, even if you show a card, could be fraud. You know, it right, could yeah. just be so you're letting an unsafe person in there without a mask. Yep. That's why I don't fully agree with this. That just means that everybody's going to be maskless in there. Nobody's going to. F- That's what I'm saying. I'm, they're Walmart not doesn't ask. even stop shoplifters. You're going to fucking stop me and ask me for a fucking card. Get right. the fuck out of here. It's just like when masks first went into place and no one wanted to be the nas- mask Nazi and like tell people to put their masks on because they didn't want to get yelled at or screamed at. Yeah. They're not going to fucking make you pull. I mean, unless it's like Sam's Club where you got to show your ID card when you walk in. I mean, you do at Sam's Club. You have to show your member ID. Maybe they'll do that. I don't know. I thought that was interesting, though. Um, so, yeah, they're they're lifting it. I mean, that's an Ohio thing. I don't know how far spread it is. I know some places don't have it. Nashville's, like, no masks, and they're popping off down there, like, partying, and it's crazy. So, yeah. but that's going on. The COVID lottery, which we mentioned. So, starting Don't this, tell them. Yeah. No, I told I told our Facebook that we would let everybody is automatically entered and you might have a chance at winning a million dollars. So <laughs> per normal government bullshit and shadiness, they tried to make it out to be it came off as if, if one of our if listeners wins the million, I'm going to be fucking pissed. If you got vaccinated, you were automatically enrolled. Well, no, you actually have to visit a website. It's www.vaccine.com. You have to visit a website and you have to enroll yourself or call a phone number and enroll yourself that way. You're not automatically enrolled. 
Um, if you want the website and or phone number, direct message me and we'll work a deal. Yes. Um, but just know that you're not automatically enrolled. You Ryan's not a lot down either. Um, and, and to all the people saying like, why don't they take that money and put it somewhere else? It is government funded money that is specifically for that reason. They cannot put it towards something else. It is for this reason specifically. It's where, bribery, but it is for this they, reason. So where's the money coming from though? It's coming from a government uh, allowed allowance basically that it's stating that they're allowing each state so much money. I don't think it's even is five. It federal. Yeah. Oh, so like every state's doing this COVID lottery? Yeah, well, they're allowed to do this COVID lottery. The, the government has um, pretty much put it out there. Some aren't taking it, though. Obviously, the southern states Florida. aren't going to. Yeah, southern states as a whole aren't going to do this deal because yeah. they believe they just want to get their life back to normal as quick as possible. See, I didn't know that. I thought it was a DeWine thing. No. That's good to know. Yeah, I think, I think Minnesota I think most is people, doing this, too. I think most people think that it was like, fucking DeWine. Mm -hmm. He's out here trying to bribe people. I didn't know it was a federal like allocation. Yeah. So that makes a difference. But that 5 million, they can't, they are legally not allowed to put that toward anything else. Well, yeah, that like makes schools, sense. Like schools, anything like it is for this reason purposefully. But a lot of the, a lot of the pushback from people, at least around here was what the fuck were, where's this money coming from? Yeah. I'm not paying for people to freaking get their vaccine and win the lottery. No, you're not. But that's what people think. Yeah. Because <laughs> no one fucking knows that it was a federal federal regulated or federal of funding what is it called uh, even if we were though a million dollars between not, all ohioans is like what like fucking three cents yeah well, yeah they, there's a uh, 11 million ohioans so yeah i can't i'm not a math teacher but i know it's not a lot yeah, yeah it's not a lot but 10 I, cents each less than that that's just one of those misconceptions of the media like i don't think that was made clear i had no idea yeah until you said that but again i didn't really research it because I think it's kind of silly. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, if somebody I know wins, fucking sweet. But yeah, I mean, guys, just letting you know, um, I'm out. So what? I'm out. Fuck this guy. What What I don't understand though, like about this, is like I said, it's kind of bribery. So like to me, I I've always had a blueprint is for it bribery or is it incentive? I think it's bribery because it's like you could be entered to win a million dollars if you. I think it's if you get this done though, because the bribery, I think you have to be like. If you don't get the vaccine, then I'm going to release this nude picture of you that I got off your OnlyFans. It is nine cents a person. Okay. Okay. So, so what's the difference between that and an idea I had years ago where I said, you pay people to go and vote. Every time they go vote, they get paid for that, that purpose. Doesn't matter who they vote for. It's you get one paid vacation day to leave work and to go and vote. As some long, places do that as long as you show proof that should be the way it is yeah. worldwide oh yeah some places do that yeah like my employer i have the ability to use a personal day that's not a part of my normal personal days to go and vote mm -hmm. and i have it for a covid vaccine as well like i can take two four hour paid increments of time that is in addition to my normal pto to go and get the vaccine that's the way it should be some places do that yeah. and i agree i think it should have and i think it should absolutely be something where people have the time to go and do it and yeah you prove it or whatever show that you're registered and you're going to vote absolutely i don't think there's anything wrong with that that's the only way you're going to have bigger numbers on there yep. unless you have Haley steinfeld walking through that front door that's the only Sheesh. way you're going to have bigger numbers Sheesh is right no i don't think i don't think there's anything wrong with that being an incentive to people yeah. to go and to to be able to have a paid time paid day off but people told me it was bribery that's why it's not it's incentivizing i think there's a difference between bribery and incentivizing someone to do something i, I don't agree. necessarily think it's necessary to do this for the vaccine i think it kind of sends the wrong message mm -hmm. but I, that was someone up top was it biden who who decided this no this is a state Trump? issue well chris said it's federal that's allowing yeah. This yeah, funding, they so passed, where did it come from? They passed a bill allowance for this to go through to every state who wanted to take this, whatever, this contest, this sweepstakes. That's your boy Biden. Yeah, whatever. Biden's um, giving me a lot of money so far. You're going to give me a million dollars too? You ain't winning a million dollars. You got one. You're definitely not. So you got, I wonder what your chances are. It's 11 million people in Ohio. Yeah. Yep. What are we at percentage wise That's for vaccination? Fine. Uh, well, I know it's better than the actual lot. And it has to be 18 or know, older. I only know the country. Because I know if no. you're younger than yes. a certain age, it's college tuition. But if you're above a certain age, then, okay, so let's say maybe, so you got what, one in two million chance maybe? I know the country's 37% vaccinated fully right now. Do you have to be fully vaccinated? Yes. No, you have to have one or two. I thought you had to have both. One or two of your shots or scheduled. I well, think. what the fuck? It's then? probably both. Because if you got your first one, they're assuming you're going to get your second one. There are only 4.41 fully vaccinated people in the state of Ohio. How many? 
4.41 million. Okay, so you have one in a four million chance of getting in. It's fucking solid, baby. <laughs> you know what my chances well, are of winning the Powerball? You have a five in four million chance, actually, because you have five opportunities. You got a better chance win. of getting yeah. the Powerball than running into him. It's not bad odds. I would just be, I mean, if somebody I know wins that, Woo. I'd like the volunteers Sheesh. tribute. Sheesh. Uh, um, another thing rolling out with COVID stuff is this child tax credit, which I think a lot of people also aren't realizing what it really is. People were thinking that we were passing like the unemployment thing. You were getting a, ch- a tax credit. Oh. They're just reallocating it from your year end tax credit to you're going to get it monthly now. And they're hoping people will reallocate it or budget it more appropriately for their expenses throughout the year than getting like a giant lump sum and then going and spending it all. So it's like 300 bucks a month per one kid, two kids, whatever, you know, however that works. So, so what's the limit on that though? It's a, I, it's, I have it's 10 kids. So many kids under a certain age. I know that's part of it. Like between this age and this age, you get so much money and it's up to, and if you have two kids, it's a certain amount. If you have three kids, it's a certain amount. I don't like this. <laughs> but, but, it's already, but it's already a thing. They already get it when they do their taxes. They're just saying, instead of us paying you the $8,000 come inca- in income tax time, now we're going to pay you 300 a month up to the same dollar amount, basically. Uh, so that's why. Yeah. It's not going to be like you're not. You're getting, not getting three hundred on top of that, and then getting an eight thousand dollars. You're credit. not gonna. Get, you're not gonna get it at the end. Those of Those people year. are gonna be fucking. That's what I'm tax day. I don't think people are realizing that, and you know that people love that big. Do you payday. have to go into that. Like it's you have all, to apply yeah, for that. Starting in July. No, it's just starting in July. It's just happening. Yep. Oh, they're gonna be so mad. Yeah. Because here's the thing that forces you to now just have three hundred bucks a month to spend rather than eight grand. I'm gonna go buy a car or buy big screen TVs or whatever. But to be fair, it's 300 per kid. Yeah. I don't know if it's 300 per kid, but it starts at 300. And then maybe if it's two kids, it's 450 or something. You know, I don't know if they break it down by the amount of kids or if it's going to be 300, no matter how many kids you have for each kid. You got eight kids. You got $2,400 coming to you. Yeah. To be fair, you get a lot of kids. You're getting a shitload on your tax day too. Yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of money, man. And I never, I don't making my fucking salary on fucking january 1st or whatever the fuck taxes come out yeah i don't and i never really understood that i mean i don't have kids so what is the reasoning behind that oh i gotta is, feed kids which i got another question well is it if you're only if you're low income or just no matter what Hell if you've no, got kids, i'm you getting thirty six hundred dollars when my baby comes out that's crazy yeah. for what what's the reasoning tax, it's benefits, just a tax man. credit yeah just for having a kid i'm having a child i got two dogs three dogs you chose to have they, them, I mean, man. I got to feed them. No, you they got medical them, bills. You can put them down right now, man. Ain't you, no law against it. I'm you stuck can, with my kid. You, wow. The thoughts and comments of Brian Weiss do not reflect the Made to Motivate podcast in any way. You're not stuck with it. If it's already out, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm not going to just kill my dogs. I like them more than kids. You don't get any money. It's bullshit. I'm going to miss this show. It was fun. Hey, <laughs> that was the one. <laughs> Gone. What? Just saying. Um, Akron Fire Department, our police department is hiring. Yeah. Starting at 60,000. I was thinking about signing up. Um, and then after so many years, it, it bumps to 70,000. Yeah. Would you guys ever uh, be a police officer? Why or why not? No, because I can't pass the fucking test. Well, okay. If you weren't an idiot. <laughs> he failed the intelligence. If you weren't test. a complete moron. Go take the test. And could pass Let's the see test. If you pass. Would you or would you not ever have interest in being a cop? No. No, why? No, because it's fucking traumatic. You see so much fucked up shit. That's fair. Like it's not even like, like one, it's boring as shit because most of the time you're just doing paperwork and writing tickets and shit. But then whenever you do get called to places, it's usually after the fucking fact that something terrible has happened. You're seeing like dead kids or fucking dead bodies and all this other shit and suicides and this, that, and the third. And it's just fucked up shit. Like I don't think I could go home after going to a house and seeing like a bunch of kids beat to shit by their drunk ass dad yeah because that's all you see also like you don't ever see any of the positives it's not like like all year in my school like we have a lot of shitty situations but like at the end of the year i get to see the kids graduate and you know they come around and we really built a relationship there's some positive silver linings like right shit doesn't happen when you're a cop yeah the number one job the number one job that divorcees partake in is being a police officer right. in like, America. And nobody's nobody's coming back to you after they got out from fucking 10 year stints and they're like, you know, man, that really turned me around and you were the one who got me there. So thanks, copper. Yeah. Like, no, that doesn't happen. It's just fucking shitty. Here's, Chris, here's what I do. No, that, that's a straight up no. 
here, here's what I do propose. The three of us. But we, you love police. We're going to do a ride along. We, we go downtown. What? <laughs> we go downtown. If it's possible, could we take the test just for shits and giggles? Yes, he did. I did. Okay. He failed. I say the three of us take the test and we see who would be the best cop between the three of us. Okay. Jesse said he would hold on. Jesse said he would shoot an <laughs> Jesse said he would shoot an unarmed man. No, I didn't say that. The situation there's three parts to the test. The first part is a memory test. Where well, we know he failed that part. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's not a memory teacher. There was a memory portion where you had to remember like there was an accident on the corner of such and such street. And you had to write down like the color of the car and where they were hit and where the street was. And you had to write a little report, wrote my report. The second part, the second part was a goddamn reading and grammar test. That was like fifth grade level. And I know I got a hundred percent on it. No doubt on my mind. I'm an English teacher. I passed that shit. And then the third part is a like two hour video exam where they give you a situation. And then you answer a question that's accompanied by the video. So like one of them was you're driving down the street towards a domestic violence call. All of a sudden you see a vehicle fly across the crosswalk, uh, you know, intersecting street, 120 miles an hour. What do you do? And it was like, continue on to the domestic dispute and call in another cruiser immediately go after the vehicle uh, and like a couple of other things. So there's stuff like that. You continue to the domestic dispute, Jesse. That's call, what I said. And you call a cop. That's what I said. You failed it. You call. Yes. So then, what? So you then in another. So that well, so there's a lot of questions. Dispute? They don't tell you what's wrong. No, you go to the domestic dispute. Call in another. Dang. Chris, See? Fuck that you, you always want, I didn't study, so I don't always fucking want know. backup on any kind of situation that can be considered volatile or anything like that. No, but you're already going. You were called to the domestic dispute call. Right. You're going there already, but you see another crime in action. They're saying, do you continue? To Not a crime. Him? He's just speeding well, really fast. Yeah. So you're supposed to be going to the domestic domestic dispute call. And in your route to there, you see a guy speeding. Mm-hmm. The question is, do you then divert and follow the speeding guy? It was and, extreme speed. And call someone else to go to the domestic dispute? Or do you continue the domestic dispute call and call someone else and say, hey, there's a guy speeding? I'm saying you go to the domestic dispute. Call. I say you call somebody else who's in the vicinity to to go to the domestic dispute. Go say, handle the dis- dispute. What happens if she dies on? They don't tell right me if there. you're right or wrong, so I have no idea what the answer is. But the one if you are a police officer, Ryan, let's go do it. Know. Let's do it. The one that Ryan is referencing well, is you said you'd shoot an unarmed man. I was in a first person video. I am walking up to the door of a house where there is a violent altercation has been called in. As I walk up to the front door, there's a big picture window in the front, and this woman is falling down on her back over a fucking couch, and her husband is got a knife up in the air and Hold starts on. to bring it down when it freezes. Allegedly. You, you, can you see the I can see clearly? it clear as fuck. It's a big-ass butcher knife. Okay. Fucking Michael Myers style. And you can't interpret this because you're not watching Jesse act this out. No. Oh, I know. Keep your eye on him. <laughs> Watch as he's doing all these moves. And it freezes. And then it says, what do you do? So the options were, (laughs) the options were to yell, stop police, knock on the door, call for backup, or shoot him. The answer is stop police. I said, shoot the fucking guy. The knife is already coming down. Is he going to hear stop police in that split second and not stab her? I just think per police, you have to announce your presence first. No, I don't. I'm going to unload on him. Fail. So clearly you were wrong. I don't give a fuck. If I am called, I already know it's a domestic altercation. No, Jesse give, cannot be a cop. No, Somebody a called job. in and I said. Don't what the rule book says. I do what I want. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> That's what they want you to do. Shooting everybody else. The fuck? It's because it was a white couple. That's why I failed. <laughs> and don't hit the button. <laughs> Fucking Susie gets stabbed. It's no big deal. But when Tyrone doesn't know it, then he's fucking going down. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. I want to know the right and wrong answers, though. They don't tell you. All I know is I scored very low. It's a moral thing. Like fucking stupid it ass. It doesn't matter. You just want to know the grade anyway. And like, I want to know the answer. The worst thing was all the people afterwards were like, well, you know, they want people who are like dumbass robots to just listen to orders. So maybe you scored really high and they just made it low. And I'm like, no, the fuck they didn't. They yeah. fucking ruined my test scores. Or maybe I'm just really not good maybe at police work. You just failed because of the whole first section that you got zero points on. No, 
because I got like 30% on everything total. It was bad. It was like an F minus. I wonder if they just kind of look the other way now. They'd be like, oh, yeah, you passed. You got 100. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I went into it because I'm like, I fucking know the law. You got to serve and protect. You follow the law and everything that was lawful. I was just like, yeah, he's about to stab her and protecting somebody else. Shoot him. I followed the law. Damn. They don't give a fuck about the law, man. They don't give a fuck about the law. I just want to know the answer. Okay, so here's my other question. Why? This is kind of a dumb question, but I was out Typical. at Wally Waffle and it just like hit me and I was wondering this. An why at Wally Waffle? Yeah. Why is dumb. why is the service industry, restaurants and bars, why is it the only industry in which the customer is responsible for paying for the product? And also paying for the employee's wage. Because, oh, you're talking tipping? Mm -hmm. You should watch. Well, they can't have a living. They don't, they, that business. You should watch Reservoir Dogs. Is making all the profit yeah. from the sales that we're spending our money on. And they're paying their employees basically nothing. And they're relying on the consumer to allot them a I livable wage mean. by us tipping. So we're not only responsible for paying for the product. We're also responsible for paying those employees to have the means to live. Do they make less profit? And like why is that business? Why is that only the only interest? Why don't they just pay their employees that is also dollars an hour and we don't tip? That's an American thing. That doesn't happen is it? in Europe. You don't tip and stuff over there. I, really? Yeah. That's just a U.S. thing? Just a U.S. thing. Can I we asked, confirm that? I asked this to a Parasons waitress one time. I was a lot younger and naive. But I, I asked that, like, why is your rate so low? I think it was like two eighty five an hour mm -hmm. at that point. And she goes, well, because we make tips, too, and all that. Yeah. I, I guess just so like, if you look at a, a, a wage poster, mm -hmm. it will say minimum wage is $15 an hour. But if you are a tipped employee, your minimum wage is $4 an hour. And you figure if you have, say you have, we'll say five tables an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you get $2 just from each table and you got $10 right there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. I mean, you know, to, you know, in comparison, like, with, but you made thir so you made $13 an hour. I'm not saying it's awful, yeah. but why are we responsible? Why do we have to pay the extra money out of our pocket in addition to the food that we're buying so that they can make that money? Why isn't the employer just paying them? No, I agree. Fifteen dollars an hour. I agree on that question. You know, like they're still making a ton, they're, they're making a shit ton of profit still because we're not fucking. Okay, go ahead. What is it? According to the Chicago Tribune, the U.S. has a bizarre government-imposed system that bans servers from sharing their tips with cooks, dishwashers, and other staff who do not interact with customers. So, because they are the ones who primarily get the tips, they are paid less to make up for the federal minimum wage. Yeah. So just pay them $15 an hour and then we don't tip eliminate then, the tip line from the receipt. I think they'll just pay them $15 an hour. That's just one of those old archaic things though, where people just did it why? and now they're not going to change. People it. are always going to tip because you're being provided a service, like a physical service before. No. You. Not me. The second that you tell me they're making 15, I'm going to be like deuces bitches. But like, what is it the, because they're bringing in your food? Oh, they're like, I'm not being a jerk. Like I'm truly wonder why, like, okay, we go to fucking birdie shack in the, People there, they service us our balls and our poles. Mm -hmm. I'm not they tipping them. They're, not moving. Moving. they're fucking sitting behind a cash register pushing buttons. So it's just because they're in a physical activity. I, I teach your them. fucking children and I'm on my feet the whole day. I'm not mowing. I'm not tipping the lawnmower. If I have a complaint about my dish or something, like it's not served the way I wanted it and I bitch about it and all yeah. that, they're the one who has to hear from it firsthand. And it's not their fault. It's the cook's fault in the back. Okay, but, so mm -hmm. take into account my previous job. Mm -hmm. What I did all day long, mm -hmm. I was providing you a service. I got fucking yelled at. I got screamed at. I got my finger pointed at me. If someone was pissed, it was coming to me. I wasn't getting tipped. Same for the McDonald's worker, which was brought up on Reservoir Dogs. Mm -hmm. You don't tip them. Yeah. But on the same instance, isn't a variety of like or a majority of uh, fast food jobs like part time? So they can't make up that gap anyway. Like you, you can't pay somebody twelve, fifteen dollars an hour. Obviously today withholding. Yeah. But with but like. Don't you have to make that up as far as, you know, them providing you a service or something like that? I don't know. That's why that's why I'm asking the question. I really don't understand why. I just like my thing is to the consumer, like it's expensive to go out to eat. Yeah, because the food isn't any. Here's the thing. The food isn't any cheaper in a restaurant that you ha then have to tip in. Mm -hmm. I go to a fast food place where the money it's less expensive to eat there and I don't have to tip. But now I'm going to go to a restaurant and pay twice as much money. Plus, now I have to tip on top of that. What do you but guys tip? But it, I tip it minimum, depends. I tip a minimum twenty five percent. No, no, no. Not what do you tip? Who do you tip? Oh, what do you obviously, mean? like waiters typically get tipped. Yeah. yeah, unless they're terrible. Pizza guy, delivery guy always gets yeah. tipped. Yeah. yeah, I mean waiters and twenty five percent still. 
No, it depends. However much no, I order, I don't twenty five percent of tip. I don't twenty five percent of pizza guy. What do you What do you pay? Usually, like, well, you know what? I lied. No, if you bought like, a ten dollar pizza. Like DoorDash, what's he gonna get? If it's like DoorDash or something, fifteen percent. Do you? Mm-hmm. You get two dollar flat rate for me on. Yeah, it's deliveries. usually like fifteen percent, depending on what. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Okay, so here's the other thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Chris was about to say more people. If I get, you go ahead. Here's the, I got one more point. God. <laughs> listen, no, listen. This makes sense. This oh, makes God. sense to my argument. Does your, does the service you receive or the amount of work the server does change by the cost of your food? No. So why do I have to tip you more because my meal was more expensive? They are bringing you more. So there's more physicality involved. No, 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 no. no. I go to Applebee's Mm -hmm. and my food costs 15 bucks. Steak dinner costs you 20. I go to Fleming's and my meal costs me 60. Mm -hmm. They're not bringing me or doing any different work, but my tip is greatly more expensive at Fleming's because my meal costs sixty dollars. Fleming's is a presentation. They're they're serving you not only as far as what they're wearing, they're also okay. grading your cheese. They're all kinds of bad shit. example. Bad example. Okay. Whatever you want to call it. The 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 labor is the same. The labor is that you're you're bringing food and drinks back. The labor to is me. not the same. I've never been asked what kind of oh cheese I God. wanted fucking apple. No, no he, he has a point because when you go to like those five star restaurants, the waitress is always they're they're trained in they're social in interaction. Accents. They're in fucking Ohio. They are yeah, they're like I don't think it's any different. It's different. There's higher expectations for the, sure. Let's, let's keep it at the same They got your name memorized same, over at that place. Same playing field. A BJ's or something might cost more than an Applebee's. You're not okay. they're not greatly trained more. Sure. Should my why should my tip increase based off the cost of the meal? When the service is the same, because you tip based on a percentage, because that's what we're that's what we're supposed to do. No, that's what society has told you you had to do, man. I think there's a flaw. I'm in convinced. The give me my dollar back. But here's but here's the thing: tipping, it's only encouraged. It's not forced. You can fucking go of to course. a restaurant. Uh, you, you can, parties no. of eight or more yeah. are forced. Yeah, you some places they they do force. Fair enough. Okay, Ryan goes to get a cheeseburger by himself, okay, okay. At, at TGI Fridays. But it, now I'm a piece of shit because I'm the guy that went out to eat and didn't tip the person who's making $3 an but hour. But that's your choice, though. You don't have to tip them. You don't. That's the thing. It's not a thing of force. If you want to be the guy that goes, look, I'm going to pay my bill, and then I'm going to hit the road as fast as I can, you can, be, you can be that guy. I think it's, I just think it's a, I think they put us in a... So stop a, complaining. A, a, yeah, you're that person, and you're the one fucking asking the Be the, the change you want to see in the world. What do you mean I'm that person? <laughs> no, you're the person that tips well, and you're asking why do we fucking tip well well no i'm just you're asking the reason why, why are we i mean i get your point but why are we in the why isn't that in why that industry i just don't understand where did it start and to jesse's point are we really the only people society or country that does that you know what i think yes we are that i didn't know. i don't know if we're the only one but i know that like european countries is vastly it, that doesn't happen australia is another one i would think that we're close to the only one if not the only but i think a lot of places strategically do it where they print off the receipt that says tip on it yeah. or they leave a tip jar out the Chinese restaurant I go to yeah. at, at work. They don't even fucking deliver. They don't, do, they don't bring it to me. I show up, I grab my to go stuff. I leave. Nobody eats in those places, but there's always a tip jar well, with a couple bucks. Starbucks in there. too. Starbucks makes a normal hourly rate right. and they put a tip jar because out. it's Why? strategic because it makes you feel like you are obligated to do so. That's a good point. When a yeah. tip Would you ever line is on a receipt, tip? you feel like you should fill it out. Would you ever go out to, Somewhere to eat and just not tip? Yes. I know you would. You if, know, I'm looking at Chris. My, ser- my service has to be so shitty that like I'm literally to the point where I'm fucking pissed Do you feel obligated off. to tip? Do you feel like you have an obligation to yes. tip? Yes. I tip See, everywhere I go I unless mean. you're really shitty. But I think because we have, we feel a moral obligation to do so. Mm-hmm. You've been taught at, to, at, to do that's so. That's what I'm saying. We, we feel that we're obligated. If right. a guy brings me four pieces of shrimp in an hour, okay. <laughs> You still tip him. <laughs> it's just weird. And don't get me wrong. To Chris's point earlier, I, tip, I only tipped I him tip, because you guys did. I tip very well. I have no issue with tipping. I just yeah. don't. I just don't understand the industry standard and Fucking why money. it's that way. Why not just pay them a normal? Why not just pay them a good rate and let it be? And yeah. and at, to Jesse's point too, on the receipt when they have that tip spot, you feel guilty if you cross it out. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I go to never I, don't cross it out though. You better cross. Oh, it. I cross it out. But like, if I, if, here's the thing: Do you tip if you do? Do you <laughs> tip if you do pickup? 
Fuck no. If I do I'm pick up the work, no, pay exactly. me. Yeah, 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 no. And there's, and I still feel like a guilty, like I should tip them. I don't because those cooks aren't getting paid in the same way that a, uh, what is it? A server is. Yeah. yeah. So to me, a cook's getting paid the normal wage. Yeah. yeah. No, I, if I'm picking that shit up, no, fuck so you're that. not tipping the lady that prepares your bag and puts your forks and sauces and everything. Absolutely not. You're getting paid a normal wage. The only time I do that is no, if it's a no, place that I absolutely waitresses. love. So like, so like at a, like a Mike, say Mike's place in instance in Kent. Mm-hmm. The people that they have, like the waitresses and stuff that are behind the counter at the pickup, that if it's a to go order, they're putting your food still, in a bag and then they're putting silverware I'm in. It takes some 20 seconds. But they're making the same wage as if they were waiting a table. They're not making an hourly rate. But, but let's be Sucks honest. Them. Let's, let's get be, a table. Let's, I know, but I'm just asking if you would tip them or not. Chris said he doesn't because they're making an hourly rate, but they're not. They're making the tipped rate. But let's be honest. Like, as far as being a server goes, it's all about like performance and all that. It's speed, it's care, it's, it's you know, all kind of thing, gentle demeanor, everything. Like if I feel like a guy comes to my table and is a complete asshole right off the bat, doesn't care about my needs yeah. or anything, makes me wait an hour for my food and all that. Yeah, I'm not going to probably tip him. Odds are. Okay, so here's my last question. It, it goes back to my last one. Should you tip a flat amount all the time, no matter what, or should it increase pay the cost of your bill? It increased by the it increased. It by the should th- no, should it though? Well, well, here's the thing: you shouldn't have to tip in any ways. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I, I guess where I struggle with is why is my, why am I tipping more just because my bill cost? Okay, if I order, if you're being brought more than, but it here, should. But here's my thing: mm-hmm. maybe I go on wing night or go, I go to appetizers that are half off. Mm-hmm. So they're bringing me a meal, and it's half the price it normally would be. They're only bringing me one plate of food. Or I go and I order the steak dinner that night and they're bringing me one plate of food. And this meal was $5 and this meal was $20. They perform the exact same amount of work. Should the tip be the same or different? Or to that. Should they make less money because I got, I went there on the night where the food was on sale or should I still tip them the same amount as it would have been if I tipped, if I got to that same point, you go to Quaker steak and lube on wing night, Right. it costs $20. They come to our table 17 times. Or you go on a Wednesday when it's not wing night and it's $20. They come to your table once to bring you your wings. And now that person's getting less or the same tip after doing 10 times. And, and the work. Exactly. That's, that's my thing. Do we do you, should the tip be streamlined yeah. or does one person get screwed? And it's sometimes because the food was less because you went on a special night and I go back the same day. I go back the next day and my bills twice the cost for the same amount of work. But now I'm paying them double than I did the day before. Mm hmm. I'm so like, is it, me. Is you it convinced me? Give me my dollar. Back. Is it percentage based or should it just be look, if you got to eat it, you tip them five bucks or whatever, you know, I don't know. The system just seems stupid. It's, it, it's a strange. Yeah. And I like that question. I like this conversation that you brought up, but to me, it's always, you know, the practical answer. It's that if my bill does go up, I, I feel like there's more effort involved on their part. So like if I have a $100 bill, I didn't order a $100 dish. It was, I ordered so many beers that this motherfucker brought me. His hand got tired along the way. And in that, in that argument, I understand where that would make sense, but it's just not always the case. No, some plates of food are just going to cost more money and they still might only bring you one plate of food. Mm-hmm but they're getting more money just because you bought food that costs more money to Jesse's credit. It's the, it's what society expects from you though. It's the yeah, fact that, it's just th- weird. that that's why we have percentages and all that. They always say tip whatever, 18% yeah. or whatever it's, you look at the bill, whatever it is, if it's a thousand dollars and you tip 18% of a thousand dollars point earlier though, we're not then we're, we're not then tipping based on the service. We're, tipping based on the cost of the meal well that you're you're based on the service if it's more than 18 percent. if you give like 30 percent, say for instance right. you were overwhelmed with the they did the presentation great. but yeah. what i'm saying is if you're saying we're going to tip based on the bill amount we're tipping based on the cost of the food mm-hmm. not necessarily based on the service or amount of work that they did we might tip extra if they were exceptionally nice yeah and they showed me their boobies yeah oh that was she showed me a boobies and that, i like that too that'd probably be a hundred percent but Otherwise, you're just tipping more because the bill costs more. It's nothing service related. Yeah, that's stupid. Fellow motivators, do not tip anymore and put these women on the False. streets so that the system will change and they can get a living wage. So, no. my, so my thing, if if the system did change, if they made a normal wage, like an hourly wage, whatever, twelve dollars an hour or something, yeah. then yeah, you probably would see less tipping. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the right answer though to me because if a, a server's working their ass off and really going above and beyond for you. I kind of think they deserve to be recognized too, even if yeah. that is a couple extra bucks here and there. Yeah. I guess I don't feel bad serving uh, or tipping servers, but when it comes bad. to delivery people or anything that seems like a lazy 
like delivery people are driving. You really deserve 20%. I don't think you do. You but it's two bucks. But it's their car. But okay, so I guess they get gas. They get gas. They get gas prices. Papa John's gets gas. Yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. A lot I had of- a friend that worked at Pizza Hut. She got 25 cents, a, uh, 25 cents. I don't know if it was a mile. It wasn't 25 cents a mile, but she gets, she got gas money. Yeah. I got to see that rate. Yeah. A lot of, cause they, cause they charge the delivery charge. Mm-hmm. It's more they than put money towards the drivers getting covered. The gas rate is more than what they're using in gas. Cause it's yeah. constant wear and tear on your car. It's like, even that's if you go down is. the street, it's wear and tear it's, on your car. They pay you like a gas and maintenance charge basically for using your own vehicle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I'm okay with. Give me a fucking I'm going to buy a dud at the end of the week and just be (laughs) taking the pizza anyway. So did that. Yeah. I mean, with delivery drivers, I do. I usually give like two bucks. It depends whatever I order. Again, how many boxes of food plays into your question. This play, you know, if I order $30 worth of food, then I'm probably tipping about $5. So nowadays you'll pay $30 for McDonald's. They're still making one trip to your front door. They're walking to your front door, but they're walking with more boxes. They're off. They're more boxes. I know it's stupid. So stupid. Half the time really this shit is, is spilled. It's, so it's really stupid, but it, <laughs> half the time it's fucking wrong. You should you should put this question on a poll on our page. I don't even know how to clearly I don't even know how to clearly ask it because it's should so, people get tips? No. Well, everyone's gonna say yes. So but they're fucking stupid. You got really, brainwashed, man. They're all brainwashed, man. We've been brainwashed into funneling our money into an ungrateful society man jesse don't tread on me chris chris <laughs> brought us beer should we be throwing him fucking money yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah he, he won't them, take but... it he'll throw it back at us <laughs> and then uh, yell at us goodness yeah, that's true let's go drink beer i think that's all we got for you guys think about that i'm curious it's a good question um it's pretty stupid it is. <laughs> yeah, and again, I have, I have not. I don't have anything wrong with tipping. I just think it's weird. Let's just not tip for a week and <laughs> see how it. you fe- see how you feel at the I end of the week. Do it, man. Yeah, just I see if you can do it. Oh, I could do it. do it. I, I could only Sucks do it if suck. the dude was a complete asshole to me. And then I'd be like, cool, fuck you, dude. When I pick up food from somewhere, mm-hmm. like if I ordered from Mike's and I go there and pick it up instead of having them deliver it to me or like sitting down and eat. I like want to wait for the person to turn away before I like sign the paper and write no tip because I feel embarrassed. Like I feel like I should tip them. And you run out of the fucking yeah. place. Yeah, I don't. I like hold it Swipe and then sign. they bring me my food and I sign and slide and then I walk out like before they can see me. I'm like, you have anxiety while you're picking up your food. I just feel like there's that obligation that there's a tip line there. You're driving all the way out to tip. fucking Mike's place and you're going to pay them. I know. Give them, I know. I agree. Give them the old Alec Baldwin from Fun with Dick and Jane. I just want to show you what you're worth. Yes. It gives them like a dollar. Like a they won't even deliver to you. That's a good movie. Mike's. Mike's won't deliver no. here. Their food's so good. Yeah, Mike's good. All right, guys. All right, bye. That's all we got. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. That is Made to Motivate podcast. Make sure you tune into the show every week. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell on YouTube so you know when the new videos launch. And check out our pages individually if you can. We appreciate the support. At Jesse Unk, SI on Twitter. Chris, the film freak Kessinger. Check out the film freak review page on Facebook. And I am Ryan Weiss. You can check out rockeverywhereinc.etsy.com to follow my art and apparel page. We appreciate the support. And of course, at Made to Motivate Podcast on all social media sites. Thanks again. And we'll check you next week.